And our next guest is Long Bonds, tactically positive on energy. A Rosenberg Research founder and President David Rosenberg joins us. Happy Friday, David. Good to see you. You too. Thanks for having we, me on. We were just mentioning the real consumption numbers. The Chicago PMI numbers a little ugly. Sounds like data that uh, you would certainly would get your attention. Yeah, I was actually uh, enjoying uh, watching the conversation for the past few minutes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think that the economy is uh, has hit what we used to call stall speed. One point three percent first quarter. It looks like we're going to come close to that again in the second quarter. I find a lot of people are still focused on last year's 3% uh, plus GDP reading, and everybody thinks the economy is just uh, still coming up smelling like roses, but uh, it is slowing down materially, and now we're down to just over 1% growth. And then the question we have to ask ourselves is, uh, where do we go from here? Uh, are we going to stay at 1%? Uh, are we going to decelerate further? Because if we do, then you're going to be talking about the recession that nobody sees actually coming. And I think the other question we have to ask is that if you're if you have a bullish macro view, what is the catalyst uh, that's going to cause the reacceleration, especially now that the biggest support for the economy the past few years, which was these uh, excess pandemic savings, uh, have already been more than spent uh, as per the San Fran Fed. So uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, the economy is uh, it is weak, and, and, and the risk is that it's going to weaken even further from here. Do you think next week's jobs number is going to ratify that view? Well, it's, it's really hard to say with the non-farm payroll report because uh, it's been skewed uh, so much by, you know, the, the birth death model. Uh, even though we have uh, business insolvencies going up and uh, gross business creation going down, you know, half the gains in the non-farm payrolls has come from the birth death model. Uh, so it's tough to say. Uh, you know, the household survey, you know, has diverged uh, and uh, it already peaked uh, several months ago. Um, but my sense is that it's uh, it's probably not going to print negative, but I, I think that for the second month in a row, it's going to be fairly soft. I think, you know, the, clearly the economy is slowing a little, David, but I'm not sure that many would agree that it's stall speed. How, what, 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 do, what do you see? It's still above trend, aren't we? Well, no, it's, it's not above trend. I mean, the, the growth in the economy on a supply side is not 1%, Sarah. I get, when we talk about trend, we're talking about the non-inflationary growth potential and you're really looking at uh, the supply side when you talk about trend and that means productivity and labor force growth and right now when you talk about trend it's probably close to three percent on the supply side and the demand side which is what gdp is is now running barely above one percent uh, and that's why you can get a situation where maybe we don't get an nber defined recession um, but demand growth stays so far below what you call trend, which is really aggregate supply, uh, that inflation is going to come down. I think come down a lot more in the next uh, 6, 12, 24 months than what's priced in right now. And I think it's going to surprise a lot of people on the Fed as well. Finally, David, really quick. Um, we mentioned bonds. Where, where is a medium-term target on the 10-year for you? Uh, Define medium term. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, you know. I think we will finish this cycle with the ten-year note um, at or below three percent. 